thing standing between you and beer. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to hurry this up. Uh, I'm Alex. Uh, I'm based in London, even though I was born in Romania. Uh, and I do a couple of things on the internet, remotely, and sometimes in London. Uh, one of the things I do is I work for Nexmo as a developer advocate. Uh, Chris is here with me. If you guys see us after the, uh, like after my talk, feel free to ask us anything. And on top of that, I'm a, I'm a Mozilla volunteer, and I do a couple of things for them. I'm a Mozilla tech speaker, and I'm a Mozilla reps council, which is basically their way of uh, building volunteer communities. If you want to ask me anything, I'll be around in the back, around the beer. <laughs> I've already had a few, so if I mumble or stumble, or I can't fall off the stage, uh, but bear with me. And I want to talk to you guys about tonight, I want to talk to you guys about anglers and forms. Um, what is a form? I looked up online, I didn't put the wiki description because I found it crazy, uh, but there's a wiki description that says it's a form is a cohesive, ex effective, and compelling data entry experience. Uh, now, in terms of experience, that's what all, all I care about. It's my experience developing them and the user's experience in using them. So we're gonna go through a few points Mainly, how easy it is for me to write the code for it, how easy it is to validate, to show errors, and uh, <coughs> to track changes. Okay, so let's go through them. Uh, okay, uh, le let's go through them. So there's two ways of doing forms in Angular. One of them is um, template-based. And the other one is called reactive forms. They, uh, Angular even separates them into different modules, uh, like forms module and reactive forms module. Uh, they both belong in the same base Angular forms uh, package. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go on a one and two basis. Uh, template forms have two things that define them: it's a component class and then an HTML-based template. We're gonna start off with the component because there's nothing special about it. Uh, if you look at the, the screen, it's basically, the, uh, there, there is the only s form thing in it, it says on submit, uh, but that's my just my f me method name. You could have called that Alex is on stage and it still worked. So there's nothing special about the component. It's just a way to have a model, to have uh, a place to store data, the user inputs into them. And then the magic happens in the template. Uh, so I, um, I, I have a template here which is supposed to have a, an input for a name and an input for an alter ego. I'm building a, like a, a, a hero registration thing here. So uh, you have a name and you have an alter ego. And then a bunch of different things happen. Like I have here something called an ng model. Like this construct is called a banana in a box. I know, really creative on the Angular side. And I, s I give it a name and I say, look, uh, in the model, put a name and then use this to transport it to my, uh, to my component. And I have to set a name in here. Now, uh, for this is name equals name because, well, I'm bad on naming. Uh, but this is uh, like uh, the name in there for ng model to work. You have to have a name, uh, which has to be a unique identifier. And uh, I'm using, like, this is the same thing, an input and a label. It works for more than one thing. I'm building a, a select box here with a bunch of Angular directives. That's a, a repeat directive that just gives me options in my select. And that's everything uh, you need to do. Like That's the template for a form. You have to do ng model, and that's about it. And what that does is it links your component model to the form. Now, do you see any problem with this? We're gonna talk about problems later, uh, but think about what, what, what's your problem with this HTML-based template, like why you wouldn't use HTML-based templates. So we said we were gonna look at the, how you create one and the model, that was it. And now we're gonna look at change and change tracking and validation. Because you put the ng model in there, the run in the box, and you associated the name on it, it doesn't only move data to your component, it also updates CSS for it. So, because of the ng model, you can figure out, is this field clean? Did someone touch it? Is it valid? Uh, is it invalid and stuff like that? 
And for each of those questions, the CSS class on the element changes. And that means you can use CSS classes in your CSS to display some sort of visual indicator to your user that something changed. For example, uh, for invalid fields, I'm putting a, a red border on the left of the field. And if it's valid, I'm putting a, a green border. So the user has an indication of valid or not. The only problem is, well, my model doesn't know if it's valid or not. Only my user knows. What happens when I uh, want to show errors, right? Because if my model doesn't know, I can't really apply a lot of logic for that. And the way I show errors is uh, because I connected, like previously I only had ng model and name and stuff like that. And now I'm basically connecting my form back into ng model. It kind of creates a circle. And it's saying, I want to put validation information on the model as well. And after you connect validation information, you can basically say, OK, do an if. If it's hidden, show me something. If it's not, not. Uh, w w like error detection and stuff like that seems kind of a bit of an overkill on template forms. And it's a magic of CSS and a bunch of logic and, well, a lot of Angular. And uh, so we looked at four things for the template forms. Now, uh, lo looking back on it, uh, one, of the, one of my issues with template form is, is what happens when I have a massive form? Like I have to write maybe two or 300 lines of, of HTML and then connect it all back into Angular and then have, well, I have to figure out a bunch of things like this, which takes a while. What happens if uh, I, I want to repeat something in my form, right? Well, if I want to repeat something in my form, I'm out of luck. I have to like write the same thing over and over again and then give it a unique name every time. So I'm going to have, like for the same controls, I'm going to have to have different names. And the Angular team kind of figured, well, we need a better way of doing forms. We need, uh, we, we need a way of doing forms for advanced use cases. Like I had a 12 part, uh, I had a 12 part registration form, like a wizard. And template forms took literally 500 lines of HTML to get it working badly. And everyone who, like everyone who had to maintain it after me, good luck with that. Uh, so Angular has a different thing for forms. It's called reactive forms. And reactive forms comes as a, as a module with four basic, like four basic uh, classes. One of them is called an abstract control, which is basically a, an abstract method, an abstract class that has a bunch of the common methods and uh, properties. Some of them are observable. Uh, show of hands, anyone knows what observables are? Okay, quite a fair, <laughs> quite, quite a fair amount of you. Uh, if you don't, please go and look them up. It's like the next big thing in, uh, on the web, alongside progressive web apps and service workers and stuff like that. So uh, you've got an abstract control, which basically is the, the base class. And then you have a form control, which is supposed to manage just one control. Like one of the input boxes I had, that's a form control. The select box, that's another form control. Then you have form groups, which are basically a way of grouping form controls into one single object. It's not a lot of sp sp specialness to it. And then you have form array, which makes it interesting because now on top of grouping form controls, you can actually have in, inside the form array, you can have form controls and form groups. And the, the, the cute part is it's, it's an array, not an object, so you have an index attached to it. Okay, so that's the basic ones. How, do, how does, a, like you saw how a template form looked like, like creating an input field was basically putting HTML on a page. How does creating an input field look for form controls? It looks like this. It's basically you create a form group and put a new form control inside of it, and that's it. So you don't have a, a template. You don't have something that's template driven any anymore. You have something that's code driven now, and ha having a new control means just basically doing new form control. Uh, so form control uh, accepts three optional arguments. I have none in there because that's the simplest way to create a form control. Uh, but it has optional arguments. One's the initial data, data value. The other one is an array of validators. And the last one is an array of asynchronous validators. Uh, this is how a form control renders on the page. 
So you have the form group you specified, and then you have basically the input with the label and the form control, and that's it. What happens though if I wanna, so if this is how a form control looks like with a form group, what happens when I wanna build a massive form? I keep having to do new form control, new form control every single time, right? Uh, well, there's an easy way. Angular has kind of a utility class called form builder. What it basically does is it creates a factory for you and you can specify everything like a, a, a key value pair. Instead of having new control, you have, well, this is a name and that's the form control previously called name. And instead of having to do new every time, you can just specify an object which is represents your form. Uh, the difference is, well, it makes it compa c compact and readable, and it beats writing a, a bunch of new form controls every time. We looked at, so we said we're gonna look at four different things. This is basically template dri driven forms template creation model. This one is pure code. You don't have to mess around with the template or anything. Uh, the next thing we looked at was validations. Uh, so the form control had native, uh, the, the template form had native HTML validations. Uh, the, this one has, uh, you guessed it, code validations. So there's a, there's a class in Angular which is called validators, which has a bunch of different, uh, different uh, different methods in there, which kind of basically correspond with HTML validators. It's a one-on-one -on -one match. And if you look at what I did is, I added a bunch of validators to my code, and then there's something called forbidden name validator, which doesn't really belong to validators, doesn't look the same, right? That's because I can have custom validators. So I don't have to rely on HTML anymore. I can create my own custom validator validators. And the validator in Angular is basically a factory that takes a regular expression into it. It's supposed to be a pure function, so uh, at the end of it, I shouldn't return any type. I should just return valid or not at the end of it. I shouldn't have to care about uh, types and stuff like that. What I do there is, well, uh, my, uh, my, my whole thing isn't supposed to be called Bob which, well, I, I have nothing, if you call Bob, it's a cute name, it's just, I need an example and they couldn't, I can't really use a Alex, that's I have to, I have to be okay with myself. Uh, so okay, we looked at validations and how that ha happens. There's an extra added bonus that you have custom validation. How does, um, how does change tracking happen? So we saw for template forms, change tracking was based on ng model and you had a bunch of CSS that was changing. For reactive forms, because everything happens in code, you have a <laughs> code way of doing things. Uh, one of them is the form control that value changes, and the other one is ng on changes. The, the first one is an observer, which that means is you subscribe to, to the observer and it keeps sending you a stream of is it valid, is it not, is it valid, is it not. Whenever something changes, you get notified about it, and that's on the form control level. Like every control is gonna fire off a warning. Now, ng on changes happens happens a, a, a bit differently, and that's it's called the lifecycle hook in Angular, and that triggers whenever your entire form changes. So whenever there's a change, you're gonna get notified that hey, in this form, in this control, something changed. So you want to do something about it. Why would you do that instead of well everything else? For example, if you have a first name last name thing, right? Whenever the last name isn't, isn't valid, you wanna let the user know that the first name is invalid or, the, or that it needs to change the email. And that basically means when you have, when you have like ng on changes, you can interact and validate multiple fields at the same time based on one. Like for example, if you build, if you build something based on three different fields, you can invalidate all three of them. Like for cards, for example, you can say, "Hey, this if the it, like if the, the the Visa or Mastercard changes on the card, you can invalidate the whole form, not just the card type." You can say, "Actually, because it's a Mastercard, now all three fields become invalid." And that's basically uh, so. That's basically change tracking. And now, because you have all of these together, you saw kind of the differences. Uh, can anyone tell me, uh, so I've got a list of other differences. Can anyone tell me which one's async and which one's synchronous? 
No takers, okay. So what happens is because, uh, because the reactive forms are code-based, uh, they're all synchronous. And uh, because the, the template forms get created by Angular, Angular takes a couple of cycles, at least a couple of cycles, to create the whole thing, so it's asynchronous. When you, when you try to access something in a form, you get a uh, change before detected or something like that. You get an error. Why is the, that error important? Like the user might not, no, might not notice it, uh, but you as a developer, when you try to test it, you have to use a bunch of AC, a async and await to test your code, Where we, whereas with reactive, uh, with reactive forms, everything is in code form anyway, so you get uh, the other bonus of easy, easily being able to test your code. Now, I promised you I'm gonna be fast. Uh, I have a, thank you, like my only Spanish is Estrella and Gracias. I chose to put uh, Gracias in there instead of Estrella. Uh, be before I go, I just wanted to tell you guys that uh, Nexmo, we the guys from Nexmo kind of sponsored this as well, and we have a little, uh, like a little treat for you. Uh, if you go on the website, dashboard.nextmo.com slash coupons, uh, we offer you guys uh, a coupon to try our service. What our service does is basically we're a cloud communication platform. Uh, you can send SMSs and make voice, this is my shameless plug by the way, listen up. Uh, so you can make SMSs and uh, voice calls using Good API. When you sign up, you get like two euros credit and the extra 10 kind of goes a long way. Uh, a number in the UK, for example, is 50p, and uh, an SMS is one cent or something. So uh, y you can try us out. If you have any questions, my uh, Twitter handle is there, or me and Chris are here. Uh, feel free to ping us anytime. Also, at the back uh, uh, of the room, I think we have stickers and stuff like that, yeah? Feel free to take one, and uh, coupon codes. In case you don't wanna take a picture of that, there's coupon codes, physical coupon codes in there. With that, uh, I thank you, and let's go for Estrellas.